So, you know, we should have some additional testing here for error handling and things like that, but just to keep things simple and to keep this as short as we can, uh, that's all we're going to implement for now. So we have a test fixture with one massive test case. So, like I said, this is how I would write uh, test code um, several years ago, and probably it was really even worse. You know, I wasn't really abstracting things um, behind interfaces. So this is probably um, even better than what I was doing a few years ago, but there's still a lot of problems with it. So um, first problem is, um, well, that there is, this is really a bad test name. It doesn't really say what's going on. Um, Worse than that, there's really a lot going on in this test. We're really asserting, you know, four different things. So we have one test that could fail for multiple different reasons. So ideally, we want our tests to have exactly one reason that they could fail. So each test should really only be asserting um, one, one thing, one behavior. So we can refactor this pretty easily. We can um, basically just make a copy of this big method here. And we can start breaking things up. So instead of just a handle test, we can say handle, uh, let's see, so replies with success. So our first test here, we're just going to make sure that this reply that comes back um, from the handle method actually has marked um, uh, this succeeded property is true. So we can go ahead and take out these other asserts here because they're, um, they're not necessary for what we're testing here. Um, we can kind of keep doing the same sort of thing. So we can keep breaking um, this method up. Oops. All right, and this one we'll just say handle should save user to repository. Okay. And for this one, we don't care about the reply. We're checking that in a different test. All we really care about is this check right here, making sure that our repository was called correctly. So we can go ahead and take those inserts out. Okay. Now let's go ahead and make one for checking um, that our email was dispatched. Handle should email user. All right, and again, we don't need our reply anymore. We're already checking uh, these first two in separate test cases. So really all we're doing in this test case is just checking that our email dispatcher was invoked correctly. And let's go ahead and just rework this test. This is gonna be our last test. So we want to make sure that the authenticator uh, was called. So user is marked as authenticated. <clears throat> Okay, so we've gone from one uh, test that's got multiple asserts in it and uh, that's not really named uh, in, in a useful way to four separate tests, each of which describe exactly what they're gonna do. Um, so we've made some improvements here. Let's go ahead and rerun this. Since we refactored the test uh, fixture, we need to make sure that it still works. All right, and all four tests pass. So we haven't lost any functionality. We've actually um, increased the number of lines of code but we've actually made our test cases a little bit better. Um, the problem that we have now, though, is that we've got a lot of repeated logic um, across these test cases. So what's going to happen is if we decide we need to add, you know, a different, um, maybe another dependency to our create user handler, or maybe we need to take one out, whatever, um, we're going to have to change it in all of these test cases. So what we want to do is consolidate this into, um, you know, so that we're reusing code and not repeating quite so much. So if we look at one of these tests, we've really got the standard arrange uh, act assert pattern. And in each of our test cases, the arrange and act portions are identical. So that suggests that we can encapsulate this block um, and really only have the asserts vary in each of our test methods. So an easy way to do that is to take advantage of in-unit setup methods. So let's go ahead and add a setup method. Uh, let's just call it arrange and act. And we just mark it with the setup attribute. All right, and what we're going to do is take the arrange and act portions of our test cases and put them here. And instead of creating local variables, we're just going to create some fields. 
and we do need to store the reply because some of our test cases are going to use that. So we're going to create a field. Create a field. All of these are just becoming fields. So now we can go through and reduce each of our test cases to just the relevant blocks of code. So we don't need that or that anymore. Don't need that. And we don't need that. All right. So. Now we've consolidated the repetitive code into a setup method. So our arrange and act are done only um, here in our setup method. And if you are not familiar with NUnit, it's actually rerunning the setup method um, before each of the test cases is actually executed. So we haven't really changed the behavior of anything. We've just reorganized it. And again, since we refactored, let's check and make sure our test passes, and it does. All right, so we've solved the problem of having bad names. Um, we've solved the problem of multiple asserts per test, um, but in doing so, we created a different problem of repeated logic, and now we've solved that um, by encapsulating things in a setup method. But what we've actually done is created yet another problem. So what's going to happen if we now need to add a test case that um, requires a different arrangement or a slightly different action? Maybe we need to check what happens if we call the handle method and we leave out the username or maybe we are calling uh, the handle method but the repository uh, is going to reply as if the um, requested username is already in use so we're, you know maybe we're testing out some error handling we can't easily do that um, by adding another test case here because the arrange and the act have already been performed before our test case uh, definition so we can't really do that here so what we could do is start creating multiple test fixtures for each of our arrange and act um, blocks of logic. So we could reorganize this a little bit. So let's just, uh, just to keep things arranged in a nice hierarchy, let's go ahead and make a wrapper class. Uh, normally I don't like nested classes, but I think for organizing your unit tests, it actually has some value here. So we're just going to go ahead and make an outer create user handler tests class. All right, and we're going to have to rename our inner test fixture here. So this isn't really just create user handler test anymore. This is um, this is create user handler test create user handler test when um, user does not exist in repository because that's really what we are um, setting up here. We're setting up an empty repository. So if we wanted to um, write some test cases around what's going to happen if there is, uh, maybe there is a conflict, the username is in the repository, could create a, another text, test fixture here. So when username is in use, and again, this is going to be a test fixture. And we can go ahead and borrow um, a lot of logic from here. We could encapsulate this differently. We could maybe add a, a base class and um, some virtual stuff and we'll actually um, you'll see in the end goal or the uh, end state that we're actually going to do that but for now let's just um, stick with copying and pasting this so let's go ahead and do that and let's um, add a slightly different expectation or behavior to our user repository so let's just say that our user repository uh, when it receives a receives an add for any user Let's just have it throw an exception. So let's just say that uh, it's going to throw an invalid operation exception um, when a username uh, is in use, or there's some other problem that can't add the user. All right, so now what we want to do is create a test. Oops. So it should return. Uh, should not return success if user is in use. 
no, excuse me, that should be user name is in use. All right, so let's go ahead and check our reply. So assert that reply dot succeeded is false. So we're expecting the handle method now to return a message that says, hey, I couldn't add the user because something went wrong. So let's check this, see what happens. And instead we get the invalid operation exception because we're not doing any error, error handling inside of, whoops, inside of our handle method here. So let's go ahead and add some error handling. So if it throws an invalid operation exception, we're just going to assume that that means the username is in use. And we're going to reply, setting succeeded to false. All right, let's go ahead and run this. All right, and our test passes. Okay, so you can see how we can uh, keep our tests um, fairly well organized, um, even um, eliminating code by having a range and act performed in one location and then writing a separate test case for everything we need to assert um, after the fact. Uh, and we can create multiple test fixtures like this um, if we need to um, set up slightly different um, preconditions and perform a slightly different action. Um, the problem with this is that, well, there's several problems. Um, as you can see uh, here, at least, we've got a lot of private fields that we're not using in any of our tests, so really we don't even need those. And here, you know, we've got some private fields that are used usually just in one test, so um, I really don't like that. You know, if something's, uh, if you have a field, I think it should be, um, to be cohesive with the class, it should be used pretty heavily throughout the class, not used in only one spot, and I think that still applies. Uh, even to test fixtures. So this is still not ideal. There's a little bit, uh, you know, too much overhead in it. And really, uh, overall, it's not easy to create tests uh, right now. You know, there's a lot of um, a lot of re uh, repetition um, that you're going to have every time you've got to set up a test fixture for a new class. Um, you're going to have to create, you know, a stub that looks a little bit like this. You're going to have to, um, you know, create your mocks. You're going to have to um, create your class under test. You're going to have to perform your action. Um, the details of how the arrangement and the action are done are going to vary from class to class, but you're still going to have this same kind of process going on. So uh, in the next, um, next screencast in this series, we'll look at how we can go um, further, um, how we can take advantage of some auto mocking and things like that to create, um, or basically to make it easier to create our tests to reduce the friction uh, to do performing test-driven development and how we can go from there to more of a speci specification style testing.